I like to tell people that getting into concealed carry at the cheapest is going to be a $500 endeavor. Uh, that's not talking about licensing or insurance. That's just talking about getting a little bit of the tools and the ability to start practicing. On two different piles here, I have a representation of what that $500 would get you. So on the left here, I have the Sky CPX2. This is a $150 pistol, and it is in a budget appendix carry holster. Uh, that is that is the way that I would go if someone was going to buy this pistol. Uh, if you're abiding by that $500 rule, well, then you get 500 rounds of ammunition for training, and you get 100 rounds for defense. So this is Federal HST 147 grain. I think that's the best stuff uh, for defense for a pistol like this. Um, and then... Uh, Generally, whatever is cheapest, I tend to avoid steel case ammo on the cheaper pistols because of cycling issues. Um, so this stuff would reliably perform, it has reliably performed in this pistol. Um, and it works. So what you get is roughly 500 rounds to train with and 100 rounds uh, to test your pistol to see if that works with this defense ammo. On my right, I have the Ruger LCP2 and 22. And I have the same 100 rounds of defense ammo, um, but instead of 500 rounds of training ammo, I have 4,000 rounds of training ammo. It's not the cheapest ammo for training. This is the stuff that, uh, in my experience, goes bang every single time. It, it is, um, <laughs> this is, this is the ammo that is actually as reliable uh, for ignition as any of the centerfire cartridges I've found. So uh, not cheaping out. I won't cheap out on 22 ammo. It's not worth it. This is 4,000 rounds of ammo that is not going to give you failures in this gun. It's quite a big difference in the amount of rounds that you have to practice with. And uh, that is going to make a huge difference in your effectiveness. So while you may not think the 22 is the most effective defense caliber, I think that most people will agree that the person who has shot this much ammo through a gun is going to be better at defending themselves with this gun than the person who has shot this amount of ammo through this gun and is going to be defending themselves with this gun. Uh, that's, that's how I look at it. On the, on the 22 versus centerfire debate, um, as far as reliability goes, I actually believe that you will encounter more frequent stoppages, more frequent mal malfunctions and uh, issues with the gun if you go this route than if you go this route. What I've found is that when guns malfunction, most of the time, it is the shooter inducing those malfunctions. It is the, uh, the improper grip or uh, just poor pressure applied to the pistol that makes the pistol choke. I will tell you, I did not have any trouble inducing malfunctions in this gun when I was doing my, uh, my reliability test is... Some of that I purposely limp wrist the gun in uh, both hands, left hand and right hand. <clears throat> I could get this to choke uh, if I limp wristed it in all three of those methods. This gun, I could not induce a malfunction while trying. So right there, reliability is there. As far as uh, deadly force or stopping power oh man guys if you hit stuff that matters bad guys go away and if you don't nothing happens i've i've said that so many times before but it's true if you put a hole in a heart or a massive arterial area uh, or a brain bad guys stop doing what they're doing if you don't 
Nobody cares. So the, the wiggle room provided by having a slightly larger projectile, I don't, I don't care about that, right? How many times are you just like an eighth of an inch missing your target? Uh, well, I don't think that, that accounts for enough opportunity for it to matter. Um, really, really, I want to be able to make rapid, precise hits. And if you're talking about controllability, especially for a novice shooter, it's here all day long. Um, it's really awkward when we do this. This is a budget. This is a budget build or a budget carry setup video. But on the table, I have the most difficult to shoot pistol I've ever owned, right next to the easy mode pistol uh, it's it's kind of crazy both five hundred dollars most people would say oh you go you got to go with this one uh, i will strongly advise you to go this route this route this gun in my hands and every hand that i put it in is it's a no-brainer it's super easy to manipulate uh, it's easy to load it's easy to unload it's easy to rack the slide it has a very nice five-ish pound trigger with a very nice reset. Uh, there is no recoil, and you can't screw it up. This gun, man, terrible trigger pull. It's super long. It's extremely heavy. I don't find that it has a predictable or repeatable break on the trigger, so uh, it's really hard for me to be accurate or precise with this gun. It's also really hard for me to be fast with this gun, uh, the sights are less than ideal, and the <clears throat> um, that trigger press impedes my speed. Uh, I have to try much harder to steady this gun on that on that draw stroke during that trigger press to get the hit where I want it. So uh, time suffers as well. Um, now, if you want to talk about Jello tests, uh, okay. Cool, but it doesn't really matter. Guys, it doesn't really matter. If you are just getting into uh, if concealed carry and you want a gun that you know that you can perform with, whether you're a novice shooter and you're new to all of it, or whether you've been shooting for a while, I promise you, you'll shoot this better than you'll shoot this. And with this many opportunities to practice, you'll be a better shooter than if you buy this and do the same same dollar amount of training.